Hey, PAG, Pastor Don, I want to talk to you about an exciting opportunity to grow in your faith. So every Wednesday night, we offer a class at 6.30 via Zoom. Right now, we are currently offering a class called The Cycle Breaker based on the, the book, The Three Battlegrounds by Francis Frangipane. This is a book that I believe will enrich your spiritual life and help you grow and be set free to walk in the victory that Jesus has for you. Sometimes we uh, live in defeat because we don't know better. And so on Wednesday nights, it's my heart that we would all grow better. So join me Wednesday nights at 6.30 via Zoom. If you want the code, you can contact Ashley at the office. Or we offer a video that is a preview each week on our Facebook. And at the end of the video, it'll have the code to get in. Hope to see you Wednesday night at 6.30. Hey, PAG ladies. Join me on Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. for the study on the Book of Ruth. We are doing this on a online Zoom class. And you can find more information on our Church Center app or on the website. See you on Tuesday. Hey, PAG, Pastor John here. Rooted is back and we are excited for our new season. And although things will not look like the way they used to, we are still going after our same purpose deep relationship with God and with one another. Wednesday is starting at six. We will be meeting or we will be having fun and fellowship, but followed by small groups where we dive deeper into God's word and to learning more about him. If you are in sixth grade, all the way to 12th grade, and you want to be a part of our rooted family, all you have to do is reach out to me at john at pawneeassembly.org, or you can just follow us on our social media platform. Rooted, I love you so much, and I will see you this Wednesday. Hello! I am here to remind you to not forget that next week, that's right, next Sunday, is our virtual mission trip around the world. So, put it on your calendar because I'm going to be here, so make sure you are. See you soon. Good morning, PAG family. Thank you for your continued faithfulness in your giving. The PAG family has done an amazing job in their giving and helping our missionaries around the world. There are three ways to give here at PAG. You can drop your offering in the mail. You can stop by the church office Monday through Thursday, 10 to 3. You can do it online through the Church Center app. And you can drop your offering today, Sunday morning, in the box in the foyer. And 2 Corinthians 9, 7 says, God loves a cheerful giver. So we just wanted to encourage you to continue praying and giving because it's making an impact in our community and to our missionaries around the world. And don't forget, simply said, God, God loves, loves you. you. Hey, PAG family, welcome to our online venue. We're so glad that you could join us today. I know our PAG family is, is scattered right now and we're worshiping in different places due to the season that we're in with COVID. But I want you to know, we love you. Our family is unified. And no matter where you choose to worship, I just thank you for engaging in the word, wanting to, to learn more, grow more. And we are doing our best to provide the venues to continue to help everyone stay connected to the church body, but most importantly, connected to Jesus. I love my PAG family and I'm so thankful for each and every one of you. Hey, I wanna share with you an encouraging word out of Galatians. The word's supposed to encourage us, right? Well, that's what's going to happen today. Last week, we took a little detour and we learned about grace and peace. But today, I want to get back on mission when it comes to how we are to live our lives intentionally for the kingdom of God. And that we, through the power of the Holy Spirit, have the ability for no matter what we face in this hour, this year, 2020, as believers, we have the ability through Jesus Christ and the power of his Holy Spirit to make it the best year ever. And that's going to happen by us making the decision to walk in the Spirit, to be led by the Spirit, and to keep in step with the Holy Spirit. You know, we, we know that when we give our lives to Jesus Christ, to be Lord and Savior of our life, that means to be in control of our lives, that we live our lives with and because of Jesus. Something magnificent happens. He gives us his Holy Spirit. 
And that Holy Spirit is here to teach us his word and to lead us in his paths and to guide us in all truth. And when we go through times that we are in right now, when we go through difficulties, when we go through trials, it is easy for our flesh to get weary. It is easy for us to get short-tempered. We, you know, we, we, uh, we can get angry. We can get critical. And sometimes if you just listen to yourself, you may realize, wait a minute, I, I don't like where I am. Well, the enemy knows that. And if the enemy can get the church in America to become complainers in America, then the enemy can stop us from doing what God's called us to do. Well, we can only be responsible for our you know, neighborhood, our area of concern. And that's our, that's our hearts. That's our families that, you know, that's our communities. That's our workplaces. Those are the places that we can influence. And if the enemy can turn us into complainers and gripers, guess what? Gripers never grow. And so the Holy Spirit wants to equip us today to grow and to, to be people of faith and to be people who uh, live in the Spirit, who are led by the Spirit, and who keep in step with the Spirit. So in Galatians chapter 5, Galatians chapter 5, we're going to start in verse 16. And the Apostle Paul writing to the church in Galatia says this, So I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature, for the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other, so that you do not do what you want. Okay. The Holy Spirit is there for us to live our lives through and in. And when we do that, we have a choice to make each and every day. Sometimes, every moment. Am I going to live after the Spirit of God that's going to teach me to do it God's way? Or am I going to yield to the flesh who wants me to do something contrary to what God wants me to do? Look, we're all under stress and, and these trials and things. They can, they can put the pressure on us to cause us to, to maybe lash out or become angry or become impatient or to feel like, you know, you know, we're not worth anything or, you know, to challenge authority and all the stuff that can come with the flesh. But the Holy Spirit, no, the Holy Spirit's all about love. The Holy Spirit is about serving one another. The Holy Spirit's about humility. The Holy Spirit is about taking, taking the freedom that we have through Jesus Christ and making sure that we use it to bring out our best so that we can impact the world around us. That's what God wants to do through you. If you're watching this today, God wants you to know. He wants you to know that he wants to use you now to impact the world around you. And if the enemy can get you to do the things of the world and to get your attitude bad and to, and to cause you to be a griper and a complainer, well, then the enemy's gonna keep you from walking in the purposes that God has for you. But the Holy Spirit is there when we live in the Spirit, when we walk in the Spirit, when we walk out our life in the Spirit, we see that we will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. That means you make a choice each and every day of who you're going to live with and for. So when that temptation comes up to be angry, you do have the opportunity to go, you know what? I can choose anger or I can choose peace and I can choose patience. I can choose kindness. And the Holy Spirit is there to equip you to do that. Now look what else. Verse 18 says this, but if you are led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. You don't have to worry about the consequences of sin if you are being led by the Spirit. Here's a question. Who is leading your life? Or what is leading your life? What emotions are leading your life? What feelings that have, may have you agitated are leading your life? What's leading your marriage? What's leading your finances? What's leading your home? What is leading your confidence and where you're in right now? And, and maybe this season of uncertainty. 
Well, we can be led by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a guide. The Holy Spirit is a helper. The Holy Spirit is a leader. And we need to be led by the Spirit in this season. We are led by the Spirit when we know what God's Word says to do. We are led by the Holy Spirit when we seek wise and godly counsel to help us through whatever problem we may be going through. We are led by the Holy Spirit when we choose to obey the Word of God that is taught to us. Right now, you're learning the Word. You, the Holy Spirit wants to lead you in not just learning it, but applying it and walking it out. Our marriages can be stronger now. Our homes can be stronger now. Our witness can be stronger right now. Look, we can be places of peace. We can be places of kindness and gentleness. The world is, you know, there's a lot of stress and craziness going on. I think people are looking for people who have it together. And the ones that are being led by the Spirit are the ones that have it together. I'm not saying you're going to be perfect. I'm not saying you're going to be without problems. But I'm saying there's going to be that peace that we talked about last week. That peace that makes you rooted and grounded and established in God's love. That's how the Holy Spirit wants to lead you and I. Now, when we're led by the Holy Spirit, (coughs) excuse me, we're not going to do the things that the world wants us to do. But in verse 22, it's going to produce a fruit in us that's going to produce us a fruit that makes us more like Jesus. Come on, that's our mission, to connect generations to Jesus, to live and love like him. That's the mission. And so when we live and love like Jesus, I'm telling you, this is what we see. We see love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, goodness, Woo! Faithfulness, gentleness, as I already said gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. You don't have to worry about sin and the consequences of sin when you are being led by the Holy Spirit. And when we're led by the Holy Spirit, there's something else that we need to do. In verse 25, the Apostle Paul says this, Since we live by the Spirit. Now that word live is like a, it's a verb. And that's an action. That means as we act out the love that is in us as we act out the life of Jesus Christ that is in us as we walk according to the spirit as we're led according to the spirit he says this let us keep in step with the spirit that means you know to be in line with the spirit to walk in the line that the Holy Spirit is walking. It's like following the leader. The Holy Spirit is going left. Guess which way you go? You go left. If the Holy Spirit goes right, we go right. You know, right now in this season that we're in as a pastor, there's a lot of moving parts going on right now. And I'm just asking the Holy Spirit to lead me as I walk in him as a pastor. As I walk in him, he leads me. And then wherever he goes, that's the where I need to go. Whatever he wants us to do, that's what we need to do. It's like Jesus telling the disciples, hey, throw your nets over there. And when they did, boom, there was the big catch. That's being led by the Holy Spirit. And that is keeping in step with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit knows where we need to fish. The Holy Spirit knows what we need to do. When we follow, that's the problem. When we get tired and we get weary, we get cranky, we become gripers, and so we're not growers. When we get down, when we get, you know, when we when we just get stressed, that is when we tend to go out of step with the Spirit. That's when we tend to stop engaging in our local church life. That's when we we stop growing in the Word. We stop praying. And that's where the enemy picks us off. But if we are in step with the Spirit, wow, God does amazing things. Look at this. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. When we live a life in the Holy Spirit, we don't have to worry about being the complainer or being the griper or being the provoker or being the one that that is always stirring up the strife. No, the church 
can be the, the, the one thing in our nation right now that can actually bring hope and can bring peace. We don't need to engage in Facebook warfare or Twitter wars or the, no, 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 no. We need to be engaging in relationships that are bringing authenticity to the conversations that we need to be in that lead people to Jesus. If you're experiencing stress and trials and, you know, you're, you're feeling overwhelmed or confused, maybe you're a parent that, you know, the kids are, you know, they're, they're, they're talking about what's going to happen with school. You know, that stuff brings anxiety. I just want to encourage you. If that's you, walk in the spirit, you know, allow the spirit to lead you and then follow the Holy Spirit wherever he leads you. He'll lead you to peace. He'll lead you to understanding. He'll lead you to wisdom. He'll lead you to discernment. He will lead you to the answers that you are looking for. And so church, I want to end with this. Just ask yourself, okay, we're, you know, we're in this COVID season still. We're, we're seeing uh, our nation go through this political season that, that, that brings stress. And then we, we have all the things that are going on, the decisions that need to be made. And, and even our local church life is, is kind of different right now. We come in and, and, you know, it's not the same. Our welcome greeters, you know, they've got their gloves and their masks on or we're spread out in the sanctuary here. I know, I know the way that we used to do it, it's not the same, but doesn't mean that it lacks its power but those things can wear on us those things can get us down those things can get us confused those things can can take away the maybe the feelings that we want but but, but the Holy Spirit will bring you to the truth that you need and that's where we need to be so no matter where you find yourself right now I want to encourage you make the choice to walk in the, in the Spirit, to live in the Spirit. Make the choice to be led by the Spirit and make the choice to follow and keep in step with the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your word today that encourages us in this hour of need that we can be at our best. And I pray right now, Father, that, that you would speak to whoever's listening right now. And wherever they are, you know where they are, Holy Spirit. And I pray that you would meet them where they are. If they need salvation right now, Father, I, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you would just share your heart with them and your love for them. And Jesus Christ, you died on the cross for their sin, for my sin. And Lord, today they're saying, I want that peace. I need that God that you're talking about. I need that Holy Spirit to lead my family. And if that's you right now, just simply say, Jesus, come into my life. Be Lord of my life. Forgive me of my sin. I believe that you are the Son of God and you died on the cross for my sin. Forgive me of that sin and fill me now with your Holy Spirit so that I can be and do what you called me to do. If you prayed that prayer, God has saved you and set you free and you're on your way, my friend. Now, Father, I pray that those who are struggling right now in this hour, I pray that you will fill them with your peace. I pray that those who maybe have walked away from you will now walk to you. God, I ask that you would guide and direct our church family that we would be people who walk in your spirit, live by your spirit, that Lord, we will be led by your spirit and that we will keep in step with you, Holy Spirit. God, help us, I pray, in this hour of need. Holy Spirit, lead us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you, PAG. I love you.